Ah! Oh, 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 yeah, that's right. I forgot. We're on the final day. Hey, G fans, Goji Fan 93 here, and welcome to day 29, the final day of Godzilla Thon 2014. And today we will be taking a look at Godzilla Final Wars. I got three DVDs, yes. So, um, obviously I am exhausted, um, I, I, uh, this has been a, a, 29 days of straight reviewing, it's just like, ugh, very draining, and especially today, being the day that I get to see Godzilla 2014, I know it comes out tomorrow, officially for everybody, but I get to see it a day early, because my theater has, um, I don't know, just an early day. So, I'm very excited I get to see it today. I'm super pumped, but I'm really tired at the same time. <laughs> and, uh, and we gotta talk about Final Wars, which is, uh, there's a lot to talk about. Um, so first off, Final Wars. Okay, so this is basically the final film in that Toho has made for Godzilla. It came out in 2004. It's been 10 years since, and um, you know, definitely went out with a bang. And that's why I love this film so much because I feel that the director, you know, he he said, you know what, let's, you know, take Godzilla out in a bang. Let's just, you know, end the series with just craziness and this film is full of craziness um and you know really if you're if you're looking for realism and a dark storyline and all that you're not going to find it in this film this film is nothing but balls to the walls action matrix style star wars i mean it, it just like crams so many genres into one film it's ridiculous and um it's just crazy how Godzilla can go from, you know, dark tone to an environmentalist, to a father, to this sci-fi, Star Wars-y, matrix -y. It's just, it's nuts. Um, so, yeah, I, oh, where do I start? Okay, well, basically this film is supposed to be, um, they're kind of like a remake of Destroy All Monsters because what they do is that they bring back a crap ton of monsters. I mean, we get... Who do we get here? Okay, so we get Godzilla, Gigan, King Caesar, Anguirus, Kumonga, Gamakaris, Ibra, Manda, Hedora, Rodan, Manila, Mothra, Monster X, Kaiser, Ghidorah, and Zilla is even in this one. So, there is a shit ton of monsters in here. Most of them, actually pretty much all of them are from the Showa series. There are no Heisei monsters and no Millennium monsters, which being the only Millennium monsters, there's Orga and Megagirus that were the new ones. Um, but yeah, so, but we get a lot of classic monsters, my favorite being Gigan, obviously. I love the new look, this is my X Plus figure, I got other figures over here, you probably can't see them, but, um, <clears throat> so I have a couple figures from this movie, most of them are from Bandai Creation, but I do have this one from X Plus, and I love this figure, this is actually my favorite X Plus figure that I have, um, but yeah, I mean, it's just crazy how many monsters they cram in. Now, the difference with this film is that they don't have them all fight in one place like in Destroy All Monsters. They, this movie, they kind of act as cameos. And this is kind of one of the drawbacks to the film, and I'll get to that later. Um, but most of the monster cameos are like five seconds long. I mean, that's really it, and that's all you get to see of them until we get to the final finale of the, uh, the final battle, I guess. Um, but yeah, so also what's cool about it is the the human characters and you know a lot of and this film you know has has a lot of fans split you have a lot of fans who hate this film and a lot of fans who like this film I'm part of the fans who like this film but I do understand why a lot of fans hate this film and it's totally understandable because I can see you know even though this is my favorite film I can still watch it objectively and there are a lot of stupid things in this film this is one of those films that it's at least to me, it's so stupid, it's good. It's very cheesy, very campy, and what I took from it is that it's a huge homage to the Showa series. Everything that the Showa series had, it's, it's you know, childlike wonder and it's cheesiness. This film has it. Um, <clears throat> and the reason I say that is because it just has you know crazy monster fights the monsters do really weird things just like they did in the Showa series I mean you know in the Showa series Godzilla flew by shooting his atomic breath we obviously got the you know the um, flying kick thing from Megalon um, you know and the the dancing in, in uh, Astro Monster and in this one you know we have Godzilla doing playing soccer and, and Anguirus rolling up into a ball and bouncing around <clears throat> I mean there's just a lot of funny things that go on in this 
and uh, it's just nuts. This film is just crazy. I mean, every second there's something happening in this film, and it, it's definitely not a boring film. It's definitely entertaining. Um, and one thing that I really like about it too, like I said, is the human characters with it. And uh, I, I really do enjoy the human cast. I, I actually, this is probably one of my favorite casts just because they're so alive and, and uh, definitely the bad guy. The main villain, the main human villain, um, the Exilian uh, command, well he's the second in command or whatever, but he eventually takes over. He's my all time favorite human villain. I. I can't get enough of this guy. Um, I even made a video a while ago that I put on my daily motion where I just cut together all of his parts and put it into one big video just because I love this character so much. Um, but yeah, so it, it, it's, it follows a lot what Destroy All Monsters did by the Exilians coming down and they, they you know, uh, well, actually, it's, it's kind of different, actually. It, 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 in, in Destroy All Monsters, they weren't it wasn't a group like it wasn't a civilization I mean it, it was but it wasn't the queen like this time they bring back the classic like exilian look with like the black glasses that go across their face that are kind of like really small um, but they don't have the really I guess I, I mean I'm sorry to say but they don't have the dorky outfits that they had in the originals like this time they have like these really matrixy looking d dark black latex clothes that are just like it's it's really funny um, and uh, they what happens is is that they come down and they pretend like they've um, what they did is that they they brought all the monsters out to destroy the cities, but then they you know they they took them back to say hey we took care of the monsters for you, but then they put them back out and then they you know try to take over the world. Um, long story short, um, and what's also cool is with the with the uh, heroes on it, these guys are actually mutants, and this is a really interesting thing. And like they so they made this organization, the M organization or whatever. Um, part of the EDF and it's so funny with the EDF thing about it because there's a scene in this movie where um, uh, two of the main characters along with um, some three other g guys who are part of the uh, mutant M base whatever people um, they actually fight Ebra and it's it's not a monster on monster fight it's actually a human fighting Ebra and this whole thing just reminds me of EDF like the video game where you know you guys running around with a rocket launcher shooting at a big alien I mean it's like or a big monster it's just it's hilarious how how similar EDF is to, to this movie but this came out first so I don't know how they dealt with copyright or whatever um, but yeah, that's that's one of the the things that I, I enjoyed about it. It was just, and there's a lot of Matrix fights. A lot of people complain about the Matrix. It, it's ripping off the Matrix. But my counter argument to that is, you know, since this was 2004 and the Matrix was still a very popular thing, it's. Do you guys know how many other action movies were copying the Matrix? It's not just Godzilla that was copying it. So to say that, you know. Oh, this was, film was bad for me, repping off the Matrix. Well, so was everybody else. I mean, it was only inevitable that Toho would try it. I mean, Toho's tried in the past other things that were a, a thing um, with movies, and they tried in the past with Godzilla, so why not with this, right? Um, and I like it because to me, in this film, instead of you, instead of having a bunch of human characters that just walk around on a base talking about shit and wearing suits, I mean, did you guys notice this, by the way? Like in every Godzilla movie, everyone's wearing suits, really nice suits, and yet this one it changes up because you have like I don't know, it, it's somewhat of a, a an engaging storyline because the characters they're not just they're not just sitting there wearing suits and being boring like they're actually active and you know the costume designs are pretty cool and uh, you know then there's more human fighting I mean that's what like the director is here he's like you know how in the other movies you had humans talking and monsters fighting well how about this time we have everyone fighting all the time so it's just non-stop action and you know I I think it was you know it was about time that Godzilla actually had a movie where it was nothing but all fighting um, but yeah so but you know there are some parts about this film that I really hate um, and some parts that I will um, like agree with on people that do hate the film is that the monster scenes are way too short and there are a lot of scenes that are not needed in this film there's one scene about a cop and a pimp and a, a homeless guy and they're doing some shit before Rodan comes down and, and takes out New York or whatever that part was completely shit I don't know why that was in there another part was the whole thing with Minya or Manila I don't know why Minya had to be in this film it was pointless, like the whole thing with the grandfather, his grandson, and, and this whole backstory. I mean, they, they, the whole atomic 
uh, t testing metaphor thing is completely thrown out of this wind uh, out of this movie you can't have that metaphor in this kind of movie it's it's not serious um and you know like i said it just feels like godzilla's kind of a side thing more with the human based uh, element in this movie um like i said there's a lot of scenes that could have been taken out so that there could have been more runtime camera time for the monsters i mean there's literally there's two this is a two hour and five minute movie there could have been more monster fights, but I will say that the last fight with Godzilla and Monster X is really good. It's it's the main event, it's awesome, and then when he fights Kaiser Ghidorah, when Monster X changes into Kaiser Ghidorah, it is amazing. And I swear, Kaiser Ghidorah does not give Godzilla a chance to even attack him, and this is why I say he's his toughest monster to fight, because Destroya, on the other hand, at least Godzilla got a couple hits in with Destroya while they were fighting. Kaiser Ghidorah, no. There was no chance. Godzilla didn't ha didn't even get a chance to make any hit on on Kaiser Ghidorah until the humans gave him more energy. If it wasn't for the humans, Godzilla would have died by pure brute strength from Kaiser Ghidorah. But anyways, um, so yeah, it's you know overall this film is is just all out crazy balls to the walls nuts, and you know it's definitely split. You're you're either a huge fan of it or you hate it tremendously and I can understand both sides um, you know me my personal opinion I love this film it's just a you know it's just fun um, but I can understand some parts that are pretty shit and I mean you know the, the part with Zilla is obviously hilarious I mean Toho did that on purpose like I mean Zilla gets destroyed in like four, five seconds it, it's not even a fight um, but like then with when he fights like Gamakaris I mean he it, that's also not a fight I mean Gamakaris runs out Godzilla grabs him and impales him on an antenna or whatever um, most of the fights are very short but like I said they're kind of meant for cameos they're kind of like oh hey remember that monster remember that monster Really, the main villains are Monster X slash Kaiser Ghidorah and Gigan. These are those are really the two main enemies that Godzilla fights towards the end. And Mothra, of course, is shoehorned in for another stupid reason. Um, they they make this backstory that Mothra had to fight Gigan thousands of years ago or whatever. That's it's just more bullshit to make to to get Mothra into another Godzilla movie. It just it really annoys me how they shoehorn her in in a lot of this shit. I really really bugs me. This movie I'm a little bit less crazy about it because obviously this is a big monster brawl so I guess having Mothra in it makes sense but you know where's Megalon where's um let's see there, there's other uh, where's Titanosaurus you know where's Gabra I mean I know those I know Gabra wasn't a popular monster but still he should have been in it but uh so yeah I'm, and I'm also running out of time on my camera oh wait no I still got plenty of time okay I thought I had like four minutes left but I saw the one right there right yeah. Okay, never mind. I still have a lot of time to talk about this film. Okay, so what else? Um, the music is really awesome, by the way. Uh, I love the music, especially when you get the perfect soundtrack collection. This movie alone has three discs dedicated to the soundtrack, the, the, the movie soundtrack. It's amazing. The, the third disc is completely devoted to a bunch of bonus tracks that didn't even make it onto the movie. Um, and... Uh, Another one of the characters that I love too is an American actor, Don Fry. He, I, I love him in this movie. He is so funny. He has so many parts in there that are just hilarious. Like when he's after they take out Manda at the beginning with the Gotengo, um, like the commander pops up on screen and then he's just like, oh shit. And it's just, I don't know, I just love the things that he does. When Osagi, which is the main protagonist, when he shows Don the uh, um, two scientists, uh, two female scientists, and he just, he just looks at them and he looks at Osagi and he's like, nice work. And <laughs> it's just really funny. Um, other things, uh, the, the whole plan too that he comes up with is is so far-fetched it's just, it's ridiculous he's just like he's like here's what we're gonna do the war is already lost and now it's all about pride and so here's what we're gonna do we're gonna go to the South Pole we're gonna bring Godzilla back and then we're going to have him destroy the other monsters then we're gonna go to the Exilian mothership take them out then we're gonna bring Godzilla back to the South Pole and put him back in his tr in his prison or whatever and then they're all just like that's your plan? Okay, it's just crazy enough to work. It's ridiculous. It's a crazy thing. Um, another thing that's really cool is the opening. The opening's really awesome. Uh, it's a big col or, com com bleh, it's a big compilation video of uh, all the movies. Not every single one of them, but they take clips from the Showa, Heisei, and Millennium. They put it all into one big awesome compilation video, like, kind of like a tribute video. Um, also, another really cool thing. I I think why I also have a, a good like 
I guess I would say like relationship with this movie is because this movie actually introduced me to Sum 41, which is an American punk rock band, and I love that band. It was actually probably it was actually my first band I really got into, and this was like when I was in middle school, I think like sixth grade or so. Um, and th when this movie came out with the song when Godzilla was fighting Zilla, and it had the Sum 41 song "We're All to Blame." I, and I was like, that song is awesome. And when I saw in the credits, so I typed on the internet, Sum 41, and it, it just started from there. So I actually have to thank this film for in, for introducing me to that band and then be, making me become a rock fan. If Basically, what you can say is that Godzilla made me a, a rock fan, a heavy metal fan. I, isn't that nuts? It's crazy how things work, but it's because of this. Because when I was in middle school, like before, um, I wasn't that much into music, but then because, or at least into rock music. But then when I heard Sum 41, it just, boom, right on from there. It is nuts. So that, that's also probably why I, I really like this film a lot, because um, it just, I don't know. It just, there's a lot. I have a lot of memories with this film. And what's funny too is that when I first saw this film, I actually didn't like it. When I was little and the first time I saw it, I actually had a lot of the complaints that a lot of people that hate this film now said. The, the lack of, um, you know, uh, monster fights, the crappy effects that were in it, um, the storyline that really was kind of convoluted and nuts. Um, but, you know, now that I've grown older, I've, I've learned to appreciate this kind of film because it was just, you know, the director just wanted to make something that was a big homage to the Showa series and a big way to end the series. Um, now I've been I've been talking to Rich lately about this and Rich is he's on the side that he hates this film and you know I totally respect his opinion on it because to you know to him and as a fan when this movie was first announced and I, you know I was too little when this film was being announced but to him he was you know old enough to you know be excited about it and they were you know they were saying Toho was saying this movie's going to have a bigger budget it's going to have a bunch of monsters it's going to be awesome and then when they saw it this is what they got and they got disappointed so I can understand you know in his point of view why this film's not good and that's why I can realize okay there are some things that they could have done better in this film I mean, like I said, there's a ton of scenes that could have been cut so that we could have gotten more time for the monster fights. Um, you know, also the the scene when Godzilla fights Anguirus, uh, Rodan, and King Caesar, that fight was actually pretty cool. I, I like that battle. And there was actually supposed to be a, um, it was a deleted scene or, or um, a, a scene that they were going to do, but they didn't do it, was where Godzilla was actually going to kill um, got, uh, Anguirus, King Caesar, and Rodan when they were all piled up. He was actually going to kill them off, but I guess Toho said, well, those were kind of his allies in the past movie, so let's just have Godzilla walk away from it rather than killing them, which I kind of like because that would, when I first watched the film, I was very disappointed that, that Anguirus, uh, Rodan, and King Caesar didn't even help Godzilla. I was very confused, and I think that if, if uh, Godzilla and Anguirus fought Kaiser Ghidorah and Gigan, think about it, that would have been an awesome remake of Godzilla vs. Gigan. I mean, right there, it'd be, oh, it'd be awesome. Um, yeah, and also uh, another uh, complaint is the is the suit designs. Um, a lot of people don't like the fact that it, it, it does, I, I do agree with it, uh, most of the monsters seem very slim in this movie and it's because I think what they decided to do is they decided to make the suits more flexible, more mobility so that they could do these action scenes because even the monsters do some matrixy like things. I mean King Caesar jumps on rocks and like does some flips. I mean it's it's nuts the, like what these monsters do in this one and um so I, I can kind of understand why they're really slim, but that was one complaint that I saw. I mean, look how slim Gigan is. I mean, he's like really slim compared to his Showa version. Um, you know, I mean, also Godzilla's slim, Rodan's slim, um, and you know, I, and most of the designs I actually don't really like. I will agree with on a lot of fans about the suit design, especially Anguirus. I, I really don't like the way Anguirus looks. He doesn't look good. Um, in with that design the, the designs I do like is Godzilla. I think Godzilla's suit is perfect in this movie It's fine. Gigan is really badass looking Monster X looks amazing and Kaiju Ghidorah looks really good Those are the only monsters that I really liked in this or at least like the design in this film um, But yeah, and you know, I mean that's pretty much all I can say I'm pretty much you know, this is probably the longest review because there's just so much to talk about it, but uh, that's pretty much all I got so 
Whew, there we go guys, the end of godzilla -thon. So thank you guys so much for sticking with me through these 29 days up until the release of Godzilla 2014. I hope for the people who are watching it today, I hope you guys enjoy the film. I'll be right there with you. I'm watching it at 9.45 tonight, my time, and I'm so pumped and excited for this. Um, yeah, and I, I hope uh, you guys enjoy it. Also, for the people for tomorrow, um, I, you know, for seeing the official premiere day, um, you know, excited for you guys. Can't wait for you guys to see it and what you guys think of it. Um, and uh, I will be doing a non-spoiler review and a spoiler review. So I'll do two videos, one being non-spoiler, the other being spoiler. So that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching Godzilla 20... Bleh. Godzilla Thon 2014. Bleh. And uh, that's it. So... There we go, the king has returned, and we have completed all the movies. I don't think I'll ever review these again, because this was very tiring. And uh, yeah, that's it. So, see you guys after Godzilla 2014. Stay big, G-fans.